Hello, dear friend. Welcome one more time to another Bible study. I am Gian, the founding pastor of Victory Church from Odessa, Texas. I say hello to you and welcome to the episode number 36. Today, Wednesday, December 29th, 2021. This is the last study that I am doing in the year 2021. And with this, I am saying goodbye to this year, but also getting ready for the next week Bible study. And I would like to invite you to connect with uh, our website, vchurch.us. Do you know that from there you can actually connect with the podcast, you can connect with the Vimeo channel, the YouTube channel, of course, the Victory Church Facebook page. You will be also able to watch more and more videos that we have available here in Victory Church. So we read today the chapter 11, and we are reading from verses 17 through 21. And we read, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, please, Lord, guide us through this study. It is as if some one of the branches from an olive tree have been broken off, and the branch of a wild olive tree has been joined to that first tree. If you are not a Jew, you are as the same as the wild branch, and you now share the strength and life of the first tree. But don't act as if you were better, if you are better than those branches that were broken off. You have no reason to be proud of yourself because you don't give life to the root. The root gives you gives life to you. You might say, branches were broken off so that I could be joined so to their tree. That is true. But those branches were broken off because they did not believe. And you continue to be part of the tree only because you believe. Don't be proud, but be afraid. If God did not let the natural branches of that tree stay, he will not let you stay if you stop believing. As you may know, this study, the letter of the Apostle Paul to the Romans, contains many elements, and the most important element is salvation by faith, which continues being the, the number one point among Christians, among the Reformed Church, which is that we become children of God just by believing that Jesus was born. Merry Christmas, by the way. Conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit in Mary. And he lived a life without any sin. He died on Calvary for the salvation of your soul. We believe that the Lord Jesus actually poured out all his blood in a sacrificial death just with the purpose, with which the word just here is kind of ridiculous, but because it's the main purpose of his death, to save you, to save me. So we, in the world, become saved. We can become children of God just by believing that he did that for us, that God sent his son. And what is the part of the Holy Spirit in all this? Well, the conception of the Lord Jesus, the empowerment that he gave to the Lord Jesus as a human, because he was 100% human and 100% God, and after he was risen and was ascended to heaven, the Holy Spirit descended to the disciples in Pentecost. And with that power, the church received the anointing to go and preach in the gospel everywhere Ever since, we believers, we receive that touch of the Holy Spirit. You might be one of those believers. You have the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of you. That's why you don't feel alone. So, but going to the main point here is salvation is by faith. That is probably the core of this letter. Is what Paul is insisting over and over again you need to believe that your salvation is not because of the way you behave. You believe because 
the sacrificial death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the name of Jesus for that. What is your part in your salvation? Do you play any role in the process of being saved? Yes, you do. When the preaching of the gospel is, is being said to you and you hear the good news that there is hope for the forgiveness of your sins, your participation is to be able to hear. And the Holy Spirit will move you to believe and knocks at the door of your heart and you eventually will repent and you say, Lord God, I need your forgiveness. And when that happens and you open your heart, you let the person of the Holy Spirit dwell in your heart because you see two, probably the most important things that the, the Holy Spirit can show you at that moment. One is that you are a sinner. And two is that the Jesus is the Savior, the Redeemer, the Messiah. And with that, the power of God comes upon you and you be become a child of God. Paul is insisting on this topic constantly throughout the whole chapters of this letter, talking about the same thing, arguing and arguing, but he also, as a Jew, because he was from a Jewish lineage, he was talking about the importance of respecting and honoring Jewish people. Today, in this era, many people don't know much about the Jewish culture. They just have some idea that Jews are certain group of people that are rich. And, and it's, it's just a wrong idea because not all Jewish people are wealthy. Actually, there are many that are really, really poor all over the world. But what is exactly what Paul is trying to tell us in this passage, in this verse, in this section from verse 17 through 21? He's telling us that originally the message was for the Jews, because the Lord Jesus, as a Jew, he came to give his life for his people, for everybody, but especially at that point, his calling was for his people. He, he dwelled among the Israelites. His friends were Jews. The first disciples were Jews, all of them, part of the Jewish community. And the first people that started to be being saved after the, the Lord Jesus ascended were Jewish people. Now, With the pass of the days and the weeks and the months, eventually, Paul show up and he was the one, the writer of this letter, the one who was sent to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. Which are those? Those who are not Jewish. So if you have Jewish blood, well, you have that lineage, right? But if you have no Jewish blood at all, well, you are considered a Gentile. And that was the calling of Paul. Paul was preaching the gospel to everybody, but particularly to non-Jewish people, to the Gentiles. So here, in this section, he's saying, listen, you have to understand this. The main root, which is God, the Lord Jesus, right? I'm divine, he said. That's divine. That's the root. But in that root, in that vine, there were branches. And some branches were broken off, which are the Jewish that refused to believe in Jesus. And then he says here, Gentiles were inserted into this root. So out of, out of uh, the, the root, which is the, the vine, the Lord Jesus, the ones that were Jewish that didn't believe, they were broken off. But others, which maybe is your case, not Jewish, Gentile, but you became a believer, you became a child of God, so you were inserted into that root, you understand, into the main trunk. So Paul is telling us here a very important thing. He says, not because the broken off branches are kind of rejected now, Feel proud of yourself, feeling that you are better than them. And he says, because remember, the big difference is basically that you believe. And he says, in order to continue being part of the root, 
is by believing. Believing is the essence of Christianity. Believing is what you should do every day in your home, in your life. Let me take you to your day. You begin your day and you should be thinking of God. You should believe that the Lord God is with you and He has a plan for you that day. You start your day and you go to do your things, get your drink, get ready for work or school, whatever is what you do, take care of the house, take care of your business, but you begin your day believing. Because you believe you are sustained by God. That faith that comes from God is sustaining you. And throughout the day, you will face different difficulties, but you keep believing. And when the problems come, and the difficulties come to you, don't be discouraged. Don't be frightened. Don't be afraid. Don't be nervous. Don't be anxious for anything. But with prayer, you will speak to the good Lord, asking Him to help you. And you will receive the faith from Him that everything is going to be all right. And then you say your declarations and you declare. Example, you say, my good Lord is going to provide everything I need according with the rich, His riches and glory. The good Lord is going to heal me today. The good Lord is going to protect me and my family. The good Lord is in full control of my life. I am not anxious for anything. I have the peace of the Lord in me. Do you understand? By believing. Believing is what sustains you. And you continue your day, you face the challenges, and then you are happy for other things, and then you praise God. And you say, thank you, Lord God, for this thing. Thank you, Lord God, for this other victory. Thank you, Father, because you are with me, because you are blessing me, Lord. You keep on going with your day, you keep believing. You will have dinner, you will go home, you are now in your home, and you give thanks to the good Lord for that meal. And you say, thank you, God, because my day was wonderful. I was able to do what I did, and now I am back home, and I can rest here in my home with peace, with my family. I praise you, Lord. I thank you, God. You keep believing. You notice that? And now is the end of your day. So you are done with all your responsibilities, and you are in, in your bed, ready to go to sleep. And what you do is, when you are about to fall asleep, you say your prayer, and you say, Dear God, thank you, because you are giving me a wonderful night of sleep. And I am not going to be afraid. You again say your declarations. I know you protect me. I know you send your angels around my home. I know you are with me. I know you will do wonderful things in my life tomorrow. And I know that you are protecting my family. And I know that tomorrow is going to be a great day. In the name of Jesus, I pray, and I thank you, Lord. Amen. As you can see, from the very first moment of your day, throughout the whole day until the last moment of your day, you keep believing. And that is what makes you special. And because you believe, you honor God. And when God sees you, that you are honoring Him with your faith, your prayers, your declarations, and of course, your actions, He is going to be pleased with you. Then He is going to honor your faith. And that is how that works. That's why Paul says, hey, you are blessed. The Lord is with you. You are going through difficulties and still the Lord is blessing you. All that is great. Just remember that. You are not better than anybody else. The thing that makes you special actually is not for other thing, but that you believe. And you believe in God, and you believe in the Bible, and you believe in Jesus, and you believe what you believe, because it's a gift. A gift called the gift of faith. Faith that comes from God, and comes by hearing the preaching of God's Word. At this moment, as I am speaking to you, I am preaching to you the Word of God. And I am telling you again that the source of everything is the good Lord. And we are praising together God for the miracle of life and all the wonders of our good Lord. Faith is going to be imparted into your heart. And you receive more faith. That is why 
You need to be close to God. Reading your Bible, attending church on Sundays, worshiping the Lord, singing to Him, serving Him. My friend, that is the way that your life is going to be. A long life, a blessed life, and you will overcome all difficulties because you believe, believe in the name of Jesus. He is the Savior. Merry Christmas again. I wish you a wonderful, happy new year. Behave. Honor God with your life. Set a good example for everybody else. You must believe as, as also you act doing what is right. Do you know that by doing what is right, you show your faith as well? Do what is right during this weekend. Don't get in trouble with anything. Don't do anything that is wrong. And on Sunday, come to worship God. If you are in Odessa, come to Victory Church. I'll be preaching God's word. And I hope that I'll see you soon. Good night.